After being shown around town by some locals, it was apparent that the Northern Gateway Pipeline wasn't the only project creating controversy. There's already three approved liquefied natural gas plants here. These huge facilities would require tons of energy to turn natural gas into a liquid where it could be shipped overseas. Exporting natural gas would require a massive increase of hydraulic fracturing in northeastern BC. Hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, is a method of extracting natural gas in deep underground shale reserves. Fracking begins with drilling wells deep into the ground. Then, a perforating gun is fired, cracking the shale open, and a mixture of sand, water, and chemicals enter the well at high pressures to expand these cracks. These fractures in the shale allow for the gas to be released. During the process, the water used becomes contaminated and is removed for disposal into old wells. Once the gas is extracted, it is processed and put into pipelines destined for the coast. The plan is to build liquid natural gas facilities to compress and freeze the natural gas into a liquid form using immense amounts of energy. Finally, the liquefied natural gas will be placed into tankers and shipped out to foreign markets. It's a little bit of preemptive work they're doing up here. We've already started bringing in machinery to clear out lay down yards and roads and access and stuff like that. I think we've got a security truck coming up behind us right now that I'm trying to kick us out here. You, you think of the ones down south in the States and, and you think, that's horrible. When you say gas, oh, it's natural gas. Well, it's natural, it's not as bad as oil. So I, I'm wondering if that's where misconceptions are. The other companies are kind of riding the wave of the, uh, I don't know, I guess curtain that you could say Enbridge is kind of casting over everybody in town here. You know, everybody's concentrating on that. And exactly like you said, everybody else is kind of coasting in under the radar. We get to like export markets and these free trade agreements that we keep hearing about. We're really seeing that this is all for corporate profit. This isn't for anyone's energy security or energy needs or or whatever they're going to tell us. This is for corporate profit. Okay. Right, the fracking happens all up here, yeah. and then you got these pipelines bringing it to the coast. One of these LNG terminals, I think the smallest one, is eleven billion dollars. Eleven billion dollars. Like these are tar sand scale infrastructure. All of the development, the economic driver for British Columbia is northern BC. You're fracking the hell out of the northeast. You're mining and pipelining the hell and LNGing the hell out of the northwest. I mean, all of all of the economy that is driving BC is coming out of here. There is a lot going on. So, I mean, you can see from this map. I mean, we are just slated for development, but this map is ten months old, so it's extremely outdated. There are now twelve pipeline proposals. You know, once you've got a pipeline corridor, you've got a pipeline corridor. And gas pipelines become oil pipelines all the time. You can look it up and say, say that it's not happening or it hasn't gone through yet, stuff like that. But from someone that's really here and living here, and like my mom says, she comes out into the forest every day, at least a couple times a day. It's already going through. It's already happening. And that in itself just shows the real nature behind these companies. When you take it away, you take a piece of our heart. You, take, you don't just take it away from me, you take it away from all of you. You take it away from the city. You, you look at books and at pictures of lucky people who get to live this and experience this. It's going to be gone. We can't get it back. We've seen it through history. That we should be smarter. No, we should be smarter. You know, we really didn't expect to hear about the whole social impacts of all these projects. Like, originally, 